So you've landed a job interview. First of all, let's take a moment to recognize how amazing that is. Okay, yeah, you're crushing it. So now it's time to prepare for that interview. And yes, there are so many great things you can say during an interview. But believe it or not, there are also a few very specific answers you can give that can actually kill your chances of getting the job. But don't worry, you guys, because I got you. I'm Sinead, and in this video, we are sharing these six big no-nos during an interview, plus some tips on what to say instead. And just a heads up to any recruiters out there who might be watching this video, some of these answers might make you cringe, just a little bit. Now we're about to get deep, you guys, with tactics on how to act during your interview. And we're sharing tips on how to better communicate what you're trying to say so that you don't fall into the danger zone. Remember, the goals of an interview are to show enthusiasm, show off your work experience, and of course, to build a human connection. When we get a little bit too comfortable or let our guard down just a little bit too much, that's when things can go a tad sideways. So most importantly, we want to be prepared. So here are the six big no-nos during an interview, plus a few tips on what to say instead. Don't trash your former company or boss. It makes sense that if you're interviewing for a new job, it might be due to the fact that your last job experience wasn't great. But don't criticize or complain about a company, team, or a specific person, such as a former manager or boss. Even if you have great reasons for leaving that job, speaking poorly of your former coworkers can come across as critical, disloyal, or you can even come across as a potential problem child. Your interviewer might be left questioning, well, if they're saying this about their last job, I wonder what they'll say about us. Instead, prepare ahead of time. Prepare to answer and talk about past adverse experiences in a constructive way. And it's always important to remember that you don't have to share everything. So decide what you will share and then be prepared to answer questions about your previous jobs with positivity. For example, if you left your last job because of your former manager or boss, you could say, I successfully navigated a difficult leadership style for three years, but ultimately it was affecting my team's ability to work effectively. After three other teammates left, I decided to look for an organization with a culture of trust and respect. I've heard so many great things about this organization, and I truly feel that this is a place where I could thrive and do my best work. <sighs> so much better. Warning, any answer that begins with, well, you'll never believe what my last boss did is dangerous. Now, before we move on to the next thing, make sure to give us a like and hit that notification bell if you're finding this video helpful so that you never miss our weekly career advice. All right, next. Don't use stories that are outdated or irrelevant. This is the equivalent of someone asking you about yourself and you saying, well, I was born on a sunny Thursday morning back in 1992. It's true, I was, but that's not why we're here. Interviewing is about storytelling, but keep it fresh and recall recent positions instead of starting way, way back to when your career first began. It can easily be misinterpreted as a tactic to avoid revealing the truth about your recent roles or that your recent experience isn't relevant to the job that you're currently interviewing for. A single anecdote from a past job that positively shaped your work or your leadership style is totally fine to include. But for the most part, keep your stories to the last few years. Warning, any answer that begins with, at my first job after college is, yep, you guessed it, dangerous. For even more on how to tell your professional story in an interview, you can check out this video right here. Don't use cliches. Yep, I'm guilty of speaking in cliche from time to time too, but avoid generic cliches during your interview. Remember, an interview is your opportunity to make that human connection by putting your resume aside for a few minutes and allowing your interviewer to get to know you personally. Cliches like, well, I think outside the box can actually have the opposite effect because they can come across as unnatural and insincere. Instead, get deep about your past experience. Here's an example. At my last job, we kept running into problems with our company's website. It was slow, not secure, and we couldn't find logins to make the necessary changes. As one of the marketing managers, it was my job to oversee the site, but I myself had little web development experience. However, I decided to take initiative and study hard in a few classes to understand the basics. After the course, I was able to successfully rebuild the company's website from scratch. 
Now, that's a much better way of explaining out of the box thinking. Warning, phrases like win-win, strategic initiative, and push the envelope are simply, well, to be frank, overused. Instead, engage your interviewer by expressing details or how you work. Paint a picture without using cliches or metaphors. Don't act entitled. When you go in for an interview, it may not be your only current potential career opportunity. Being able to pick and choose from multiple offers is a huge achievement, but you don't need to brag about that during your interview. Remain humble and of course, friendly during your entire interview. And entitlement can actually come across in multiple ways. Candidates who spend the interview asking about work-life balance, perks of the job like benefits, end up suggesting, eh, I don't really want to work that hard, or I'm only interested in this job for the perks. And this can potentially sacrifice their job offer. It is totally reasonable to ask about expected work hours and other norms of the job but sprinkle in those questions throughout the hiring process and choose those questions wisely. Ask yourself, will the answer to this question determine the outcome of whether or not I take this job? And you can always be strategic about how you get answers to certain questions you may have about the job by allowing the interviewer to share what they enjoy most about the company. Ask questions like, what's your favorite part about working here? Or what's your favorite thing to do with the team? That will give you an indirect glimpse into what it's like to work for this employer. The simplest way to avoid sounding entitled is to express appreciation. Start by thanking your interviewer for taking the time to meet with you and leave the interview showing similar notes of gratitude, such as, I really, really appreciate the opportunity to describe how my background would make me a perfect fit for this role. Moving on, don't sound unprofessional. So the interview is going well and you're feeling nothing but good vibes all around. And this is the moment we can fall into the trap of letting our guard down a bit too much. Don't forget where you are. Interviewers know what they're looking for, so you better believe they are closely analyzing your emotional intelligence. Sharing too much or suddenly switching to casual slang terms in your responses could impair your chances of getting that second interview. This may seem like a bit of a gray area because of course, being likable is a valuable trait, but just remember to strike a balance between being easy to talk to and of course, being professional. When in doubt, you can't go wrong with using slightly more formal language than you would normally use at work. Remember, this is an interview. And yes, it's time for another warning. Oversharing can sway recruiters away. Don't bring up your personal life, avoid politics, religion, and try not to complain or be negative about your circumstances. Instead, consider the interview process as an opportunity to get down to business. Don't be too casual in your appearance. Candidates who dress informally or display poor body language can come across as disconnected, disengaged, and sometimes even a bit disrespectful. Take the situation seriously so that the interviewer will seriously consider you. Dress for the job you want. All right, now let's talk about body language. Keep it professional. Definitely not a time for you to feel like you're at home, even if you are at home. Gotta love those virtual interviews. If you find yourself starting to lean back in your chair a little bit, relaxing your arms, or worse, putting your arms behind your head or your feet up, seriously, don't do that, then it's time to snap out of it and get back into the interview. You obviously want to feel comfortable throughout your entire interview, but you should still keep an upright position, leaning in slightly when answering to show that you're actively listening and that you're truly enthusiastic about the opportunity. Your interviewer will see that you're interested in what they have to say. It's not a bad idea to practice some of these subtle physical expressions. Grab a mirror or record yourself on your phone and get comfortable with smiling, with your eyes too and keep a pleasant, neutral, warm, physical demeanor. Don't feel like you need to plaster a big smile on your face the entire time. It will likely seem forced, so just take a breath and be your best self. All right, let's quickly recap the six mistakes to avoid if you want the offer. One, don't trash talk. You control the narrative, so keep it positive. Two, don't use stories that are outdated or irrelevant. Keep it fresh by recalling work experience from the past five years. Three, don't use cliches. Here's your daily reminder that you are not basic. 
Your language shouldn't be either. Four, don't act entitled or take the opportunity for granted. Be humble and show gratitude. Five, don't sound unprofessional. Be conversational without oversharing. Six, don't be too casual. Dress the part and show professionalism in your posture. Now it's time to use these tips when you prepare for your next interview. You got this. And before you go, give us a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for weekly career advice. For more from our Indeed experts, you can click right over here. And for more on how to exude confidence in an interview, you can check out this video right here. It's good. Thank you guys so much for joining us. I'm Shanita Freese, and I'll see you next time.